two things that I know now, and one of them is that my bones are squishy, and uh, the other is that I'm never getting on a plane again. This is We Have Concerns. Hi, Jeff Kanata. Hi, Anthony Carboni. Hello, concerned citizens. Jeff, you know I take our no scientist policy on this show very seriously. <laughs> Yeah, we are an award-winning science podcast with no scientists. Well, because I I understand, just like you understand, that science is a feeling. Science, yeah. can, it can't be quantified. It refuses, it refuses to be explained. <laughs> and There's one thing we know about science. It's that you can't really write it down. No, it, science comes from somewhere deep inside where we don't know. No one will ever know. No one will ever know. And that's science. And yet somehow, every once in a while, a scientist worms their way into the anxiety chamber. <laughs> and today we are joined by one of them. And I, actually, I actually like this one. I actually like this one just fine. Uh, Shannon O'Dell is here. Hello, Shannon. Yay, welcome. I'm, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I can Newly sit- Dr. Shannon O'Dell. I am, I am Dr. Shannon O'Dell, yeah. Could, yeah, okay. Well, we like you even less now. Well, the thing is, I consider myself the if if someone doesn't want a scientist in the room, I'm the best scientist to put in the room. That's actually like the cool best way. Scientist. Yeah, you're like cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm like confused scientist. <laughs> you're like the cool mom. Like you'll buy us drinks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, like you're like the substitute teacher of scientists. Yeah, I'm the one. Who, like, I'll put on a video. Yeah. <laughs> I love it that she actually promised to do that during the podcast yeah. today I was like we're gonna ask you a question about your field of study she's like cool I'm sure there is a video I can refer uh-huh. you to somewhere I, on YouTube I have a VCR I have a cart I have a big TV on, <laughs> and a VCR and a cart in the hall that I'm gonna call in here she brings it with her everywhere uh, but Shannon you are you are a neuroscientist mm-hmm. you are a comic and you yes. are a uh, I met you on your shadow run podcast yeah. on city yes uh the the classic multi-hyphenate those three things combined mm-hmm. comic scientist and uh tabletop role-playing uh, yeah player Ta- uh, yeah yeah scientist <laughs> and uh orc roller derby player <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> The thing it's is, it's another the, one of those. Yeah, yeah, there are so many of us. It's really hard when we go yeah. out for roles. It's like ugh, there's the whole room of us. And- <laughs> it's devaluing the entire job market. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you here uh, because there's been a lot of there's been a lot of brain news. Yeah, sure. And we're very excited. Uh, once again, we refuse to learn how the brain works, but uh, we're very happy that you're here to give your opinion on. It. I guess science's opinion on it. Well, is what I, I'll call yeah. it. I feel like science refuses to learn how to how the brain works because I feel like every day we're like learning something new. We're like, maybe uh, <laughs> we thought this brain. and now. Yeah, but yeah. that's but that's the thing is I remember like uh, I guess it was I guess it was almost 10 years ago when the whole when the neural when the neural mapping thing started to come sure. into come into play. And it yeah. was it was it was a lot like when we started sequencing DNA and it was like, Oh, we thought this about the brain, but we're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. just like, uh, if we collect enough data, we'll figure it out. And then it's just like, no, we don't know it yet. <laughs> See, that's why we say on this so show, funny. science is a feeling. It, yeah, exactly. It's so funny that the brain is struggling to understand itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what's happening. It's just all of us are using our brains so hard because the brain is so hard to understand. Mm-hmm. Alanis Morissette anyway. said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's in, in her famous song, Jagged Little Pill. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> That's the one. Um, I want to ask you about this, uh, this story that uh, it has to do with the brain a bit, but it, I think it has to do with really a, a lot of the frontier of science right now. There is um, some interesting work being done with in the field of prosthetics. And uh, we got this story um, that actually comes from the journal Science Robotics. And it's about, we, we, you know, we think of artificial limbs and prosthetics and um, uh, armatures as ways to replace in, in individuals that might need, uh, you know, a replacement limb or uh, compensating for perhaps an injury. I was going to say um, to jump high and destroy my enemies. 
<laughs> well, there's that too. I think you're getting more to what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, now we're in the shadow run world. Now, now we're talking science, it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you happen to be a, a, a doctor of science like, oh, I don't know, Dr. Otto Octavius, for example, mm -hmm. then uh, a very maybe real person. you're more interested in prosthetics as a way to add parts to the human body instead of just replace parts we already have or missing parts that I might, will I will remind uh, you that this is a family show at this point because <laughs> I think I know where you're going and I'm going to ask you not to go there do families listen right. to this podcast full families yeah they all get they all sit no, together there's no family <laughs> no uh, no they this is all sit together a, on a Sunday a, not a family yeah. podcast after church G, B. <laughs> You've never stopped me from bringing up synthetic butts before. <laughs> I'm going to talk about second a, butts. Mom puts a roast in the oven and everybody uh -huh. sits down around the old Philco <laughs> and they put on their favorite podcast, We Have Concerns. Uh -huh. And no, I would never, I would never stop you from bringing up prosthetic butts. You called me, you called second me out. Second butt. Everybody wants a second butt. Now it's possible What's, with science. Is, no. is a yeah. second butt a third cheek or is it a whole second butt? That's a great question. Oh, that's a good, that's one of those things that science has been wrestling with for a long time. Yeah. Because... Well, well, what is well, it? It's what like, is, it, is the butt the crack? Or yes, the exactly. So you would only need a third cheek, and you would have two butts. That's the thing. If you add two, oh. if you add two cheeks, you have one, two, three. You have three butts. Now, this is a lot. This reminds me of city planning <laughs> and the idea of building. Uh, More like building, shitty planning. Building long. How dare you? That is your one. <laughs> Don't encourage him. You're new and you don't know what it'll do. I love it. Um, no, you no, you don't. Uh, it's like the difference between like, okay, Disney World comes in and builds a really long parking lot that goes on forever and you're parked in Goofy 57 and you get a mile and a half from you. And then Universal Studios comes in and they go, no, nah, we're just going to build it. It has multiple floors. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think yeah. what you're talking about with the butt on butt is like, are we building... Are we building wider? Because that initially seems like it's more efficient. But is it more efficient to go out butt on butt? How about this? <laughs> building butt better. <laughs> I like it. We're going somewhere. Now we're going into branding. I think, and, I, and sometimes I think, branding Anthony, comes we, before the product. <laughs> oh, if you're smart. If you're the Disney Corporation, it <laughs> yeah. certainly does. Uh, do you, we're going to make them walk to Goofy 53 <laughs> and they're going to think it's fun. Because we're calling it Goofy 53. <laughs> Anthony, I'm afraid if we follow your analogy to its logical conclusion, you're suggesting a butt inside a butt. Okay. If that's that's the that's the multi-tiered uh, parking version of what we're talking about, butt. right? Yeah. This is a this is a this is a fractal butt. Mm -hmm. You're saying not wide or deeper, is what you're saying. Now anyway, we're not talking about butts. <laughs> um we're talking about new limbs mm -hmm. and in this case a a a second thumb there is a group of researchers that have actually created a robotic third th i shouldn't say I second say, second thumb on a, a single hand mm -hmm. yeah the no, third thumb Big it's the deal. third thumb. it's it's one of your hands gets another thumb where is this thumb well it is on the other side from where your current thumb is. It'd be right next to your pinky finger. That makes sense. Hanging off that fleshy part of your palm. That makes sense. Cause uh, then you add grip you know, to the other side. It does seem weird that there's no other finger right there, right? There's such yeah. a long unused space of your palm. That's there's no finger, you know, what's up with that? Well, and it's, it seems like it's, it's much more efficient in terms of like, instead of putting it next to the other thumb for sure. Or like in between any of the other right. fingers, like because then you have like this yeah. mirror grip thing. You got this huge space right there, and it it feels like I don't know. I, I'm not an evolutionary biologist, but it sure feels like well, having not another. Anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> after that lawsuit, yeah. not after that lawsuit. Uh, I still say, as an evolutionary biologist, that we all come from from the monkeys. That's what I said. Yeah. We all come from there the were monkeys. monkeys. There, there were monkeys, and then they birthed humans. Yeah, that was my theory. And it happened. And anyway, it happened a lot, like, like quick. <laughs> like it anyway, happened real uh, fast. It doesn't. It seem like having another, like wrap around finger yeah. right there would be super useful. You play two Game Boys at once. Two Game Boys. That's oh, double yeah. pocket monsters. You could link cable and trade with yourself. Think about well, that. This is what these researchers have determined. They, they created this robotic thumb and actually 
how it works is there's a little pad, I guess kind of like a game pad, uh, that is placed in your shoe. And um, it is it communicates wirelessly with the robotic thumb that's strapped to your hand. And you can control the robotics that you can manipulate the thumb by pressing down on the little pad with your foot. It's a it's it's like a piano pedal. Wow. No, it's more it's it's actually more subtle than that. It has um subtle changes of pressure in your foot can do really actually fine motor skills with the thumb. It's okay. So it's it's really actually it's not like an on off stretch. It's not like thumb thumb, you know, it's yeah. not just it's not just a binary is it, press is of it a button. In, is it in the heel or are you pushing it with like a big toe? Cuz now you're talking you're, about you're like using your big toe, the underside oh. of your big toe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this, I don't know, like when we think about, when we think about these sort of prosthetics, we think about this, like, I don't know, this, we want to put a, we want to put a shunt into our brain and then all of us do unanimously. Yeah. And then, uh, it I'm just begging for one at this. Come on. <laughs> shunt my brain. Cause please. the first thing that Shannon said when she walked in here was shunt my brain. Please. please. That's, that's please. her. That, well, that's her, that's her. <laughs> catchphrase she goes she walks in she goes well shut my brain (laughs) (laughs) it was a big hit in uh in the science lab it was great yeah there are t-shirts everyone's like everything yeah she would walk in she would walk by people in the cafeteria and they'd be like Shunt my brain. That's <laughs> Shunt my brain girl. <laughs> Shunt my brain girl. That's the most important thing. Again, as a scientist, is branding. You need to yeah. have yeah. an identity. Thank you. Yeah. Smart. Thank you. But yeah, I, it yeah. See- did it did it get to that point though, Shannon, where you you were like you're like Leonard Nimoy when you're like I'm over the Shunt my brain thing. I don't want to be Spock anymore. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, I, I, but I've come back around. Yeah. Thing. Well, you created <laughs> oh, see, you created good. that this second like- catchphrase afterwards. What was that? that it you tried- was don't go in my nose. <laughs> it wasn't yeah, as relatable. Was very COVID, it was very, uh, very yeah. COVID uh, centric. It really wasn't catching it. on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what I'm getting at is, I think we we think about we want a, a brain to electronic interface is what we think about things. Yeah. But I want to be able to think, or right. or eventually just not even think, just just do like I do with anything else I move in my body and move this robotic part. Why foot pedal? Well, I think it was easy. Th- these things are ridiculously cheap to make, actually. They're all 3D printed, the, the mechanics in the thumb. So they're, they were really simple. And what they did was... Get your thumb by they 2 p.m. Twi- <laughs> <laughs> they asked... From the movie. They asked 20 people... <laughs> I'm getting like every other word you're saying, so I have no idea what you even said. <laughs> I said I'd get you a thumb by 2 p.m. from the movie. Oh, I get you. Th- okay, you know, that's good. I would have responded if I had actually heard any of it. <laughs> We're not but, having uh, any technical issues and no. everybody shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, they took 20 participants and they asked them to use the thumb, take it home, even take it home. Uh, over these five days, and I would tra- lo- learn. I would to- love to know what they were doing with the thumb. You, you, oh. you get the participants. You're like, here, please use this. Use this thumb. <laughs> Take the thumb. Try it out. Yeah. I don't Take, know. Just use the thumb anyhow you any way you exactly. want. And they're like, can I have one of the can I have one of the second butts as well? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. No, so well, they, you take they, this they thumb and you take these them. wipes. They, they, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they uh they asked them to go two to six hours of wear time per day and just try to do uh do normal things pick up you know glasses or or you know object plates and dishes and stuff do normal things with the with the extra thumb and uh come back and what they found was these people mastered the use of this thing extremely fast mm. that they were actually using it really dexterously. They were, it was, um, they were able to use the thumb even when they were distracted. Like if they were asked to 
build a wooden block tower like a Jenga tower and do math in their head at the same time or while they were blindfolded, they could still do it with the thumb after only five days of practice. Wow. No. No. Yeah. They integrated this extra appendage so thoroughly into their, like their brain just adapted to having more ways to interact with the environment. See, what's interesting about that to me, and that's this is not what they tested at all, is that I want to then know, and this shows what kind of scientist I am. I want to know their emotional connection to that thumb. I want to see them take that. I want I want them to see that thumb then be like put on someone else or like, like what's the kind of attachment <laughs> the we feel? cheating on me. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, because it reminds me, do you all know the invisible... Oh, you're a mean scientist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's oh, okay. the kind of scientist I am. Oh, all right. Oh, oh do you, is this the, do I want to then rip it off of them yeah. and then watch, but I want to burn it in front of them and just see if they I cry. Wanna put, I want to yeah. put the thumb on someone else and thumb cuck them. And I want to see. <laughs> uh, I'm an evil scientist. Uh, you're either good or you're bad. Um, yeah. But more interested in like the human connection and like human emotion because, or just like, do you know the invisible hand experiment where you you rub lightly on on somebody's that's hand? Where you, that's where you sit on your hand and make it go to sleep, and then you uh, <laughs> no. family show. Mom's taking the <laughs> roast out of the oven, but it, but it is kind of like that because yeah. you. Let me see if I'm explaining this right. Yeah, you you rub lightly on somebody's hand, mm -hmm. but you they can't see it. They, they see somebody else's hand that you're doing the same thing to. They see, well, the rubber hand experiment is you have a rubber hand okay. there and your hand. Yeah, you can't see your hand. So you have this hand that's getting you can't see that hand, uh, the, the one hand and it's getting touched or rubbed with a feather. Then you see a rubber hand that's also getting touched at the same time. And then mm -hmm. in the experiment, then they take they stab the rubber hand. And you feel a stab in your hand. You like, yeah, you get the response of like, ah, like people think they're they're being stabbed. You at the very least reflexively, because I've had it done to me before. You at least very reflexively pull your hand away. Yeah, because it's huh. happening in the same way. You're associating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't see your hand. Oh. You see the other hand, and they're both feeling the same sensation at the same time. So your brain goes, "Oh, cool. There's my hand." Yeah. So you think wow. people are? You think that's weird? People are developing like connections to this thing very quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because this interface doesn't go like through the it's interesting that it just goes through the foot and you're controlling it with your foot. But uh, yeah, so I don't know what that means. But just understanding that the way we like think about our body is very influenced by, you know, what we see, what, like what's happening spatially. I that's I can't so imagine like in the article. I, I can't imagine having the creativity to even think about what to do with this second thumb once it's attached. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, sorry, ladies, but well, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I just, when you attach a second thumb and you're like, do things. And I'm just like, I don't know. I already have a thumb. Right. What? No, it, it was, it was allowing people to like pick up three or four wine glasses at a time where they could usually only pick up two, Okay. you know, which is super useful yeah. if you want three or four wine glasses, mm -hmm. you know, uh. to be someplace else where than where they are at that moment. Right. Two Game right? Boys. Yeah. Two Game Boys and a link cable like we were talking about. Yeah. The entire service industry. Uh, this uh, Danny Claude from UCL Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience says uh, that, quote, our study shows that people can quickly learn to control an augmentation device and use it for their benefit without overthinking. We, th we saw that while using the third thumb, people changed their natural hand movements and they also reported that the robotic thumb felt like part of their own body. There you go. There's that feeling. Now stab it and yeah. see what people feel about it. <laughs> stab it. <laughs> Every one of Shannon's experiments ends with, okay, now stab it. Now stab it. How are people feeling now? How are we feeling? Well. Does it feel like part of your body? We're going to stab yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems uh, like your new catchphrase was right there in front of you, and yeah. you didn't you didn't embrace no, it the way you should have. Put it in the nose. I don't know. I feel like don't. <laughs> I feel like let's stab it was right there. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the it, fascinating part to me is that it actually changed how people used their hands. Yeah. Did they give Did they They're give a bunch of examples? Be, yeah. Well, they, they were saying that um, the uh, the you know people would actually invert their hand. 
in a way that they wouldn't normally do because the 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 other thumb allowed them to grip things in different ways. Oh. I'm trying to imagine. What And then they said they also uh before and after the training, they scanned the participants' brains using MRIs oh. and while the participants participants were moving their fingers individually, uh they scanned them and they found that a Subtle but significant change in how the hand that had been augmented with the third thumb was represented in the br- brain's sensory motor cortex. Wow. So but in comparison to the to the hand that didn't have the extra thumb, it actually changed the way the brain was thinking about and manipulating. Yeah, the thumb, the hand with the thumb. Is this some is I mean, is this. This sounds like phantom limb stuff to me. Yeah, right? that's what it, I was thinking. You know, that the sensory motor cortices, they're super like plastic. And it's interesting to think about it in that way that like even how many days do you said it was six days? Yeah, just five days for them to, to be trained. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they speaking to the plasticity a week later, they went back and scanned them again. And all the changes in their brains had reverted back. Oh, so and the what did like, the well, thumb think thumb about anymore. that? I, did anyone ask the thumb? <laughs> what they thought, oh, they forgot about me yeah. already? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, but you, that's but like, you said that's very plastic. This is, yeah. this is something that you would, you would expect to see me. Yeah, maybe, but I wouldn't expect to see it so fast uh, that, I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked at the changes or how significant they are, uh, but I mean, yeah, I, that's, that's crazy that you could train so quickly. I would think that would have to take months to do because it just seems like it's not intuitive to move another thumb. But yeah. I think about things like physical therapy where people mm-hmm. are trying to like rehab, rehab a limb or like use a prosthetic limb. And you think about like the length of time that it takes to integrate that. Sure. But it seems like we start doing it so quickly. Yeah, that's wild. Or if there's something with the hand specifically, you know, I don't I don't know how that compares to like if. Yeah. If you say like you lose a hand or something, you get, um, you know, an artificial hand, like how quickly that are. Do we have just like a super plastic area in our brain where the hand is because the hand is so important compared to other other areas? Yeah, this is also that's a great point. Like if you if you had a whole arm, would it be? equally as plastic or right. some other appendage, it might not be the same result because the hand might, might just have a special place in our brain. Yeah. That's really interesting. It also makes me think about all the things that we hear and learn about neuroplasticity and how it's like, well, once you're an adult, your brain is, it turns to chewed gum and it's <laughs> stiff and you can't learn anything anymore and eat shit. What you know is what you know. Right. Uh, but it sounds like that's not right. true. No, not true at all. Our brains are very plastic. You know, I feel like, there is a debate in neuroscience every, uh, this doesn't have to do as much with plasticity, but recently there was this debate of like n- new neurons in the brain. And, uh, you know, I always thought that it was forever. You always grew, you grew a lot of new neurons in the brain when you were young in these special areas. But then there was this thought that maybe like you reach a certain point and you're not really producing. But then there was a big debate and they were like, no, we found new neurons in old people. And it was a back and forth. Mm. Scientists love to debate, but yeah, the the adult brain is still really plastic. Um, it's actually really that is why the brain is cool and why you shouldn't study the heart or the kidney. Yeah, you fuck sh- the heart. You should study the brain, and yeah. that's why I'm here on this podcast. Many people Thank are you. studying other organs. The kidney is stupid. Thank the you. The kidney can't do mahjong. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. There's no kidney mahjong. Uh, and by the way, do you know how? Do you know how many how many heart researchers listen to this show <laughs> with their and families? Thank God, finally somebody has the, somebody has the guts to say it. Right? Stop studying the heart. Okay. We know what heart. It's do. a useless organ. Grow we know what up. heart do. Grow up. <laughs> Study the brain. Heart go thump thump. Yeah. We know already. <laughs> Uh, blood go through body we get it learn something new babies yeah name name one thing that the heart does that's essential to life one One. thing just name one i bet you can't yeah you can't but the brain listen i can just off the top of my head mahjong exactly sudoku right (laughs) there you see there's two what's the name i'm trying to damn it 
Shogi, that's what it is. It can do Mahjong, Shogi, and Go. And the heart can't do any of those. <laughs> name name one tile-based Japanese game <laughs> that, the heart, that the heart can do that the brain can't. <laughs> exactly. I'm waiting. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. Thank you for finally <laughs> saying what we've been thinking for, that's, for so long. And that's what this... Uh, podcast is about right yeah no we please yes. come here and and do the evangelize for the scientific community <laughs> yeah. please fuck the heart fuck the heart uh my question to you shannon is would you augment your your body in, in these ways would you add mm. another thumb or another an arm perhaps sure. yeah i would like yeah, I would like a lot of stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you want to you keep it? We'll take the full package. Just keep laughing. Top on. five exactly. things you would add right now. Okay, I would add another leg. <laughs> okay. Because I think I'd. Some of us already have a third leg. <laughs> oh. Are you, talk, are you, talking, about that, show, are you talking about that sad little dog that lives down the hall from me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, they adopted this home. sad little dog, uh -huh. and it's only got three legs. Oh. But it's living and it's doing its best. <laughs> I bet it would like maybe, maybe if. We could we could give it a thumb. Yeah. We could give it one thumb. We could have three legs and a thumb. <laughs> a thumb. But that's one, that's <laughs> one dog, less leg. The dog with three legs and a thumb. That's one <laughs> less leg, but one more thumb than any exactly. other dog. Exactly. Uh, so, so you would do third leg. Third what? leg because I think it would balance me like a tripod. Yeah. Like you you don't want something yeah. that balances. You don't want you want an easel. You want a tripod. None of those cardiologists could push you over. <laughs> think of how many. I think of how many more in the hallway. Just all day. Exactly. Exactly. You could you could just be leaning constantly. And I would also I would like I think I would like a whole nother arm because I'm constantly getting my arm stuck. I'm like I'm a very clumsy person. I'm like when I cut, I'm like about to cut my hands off. Like I just and there's it's I'm an injury waiting to happen is basically my uh, whole deal. So I would just like to have extras just in case. That's fair. You just want spares. Yes. Is what you want. You want spares. <laughs> so I don't feel that bad if I injure something. Yeah. No, I like that. I got gotcha. you. But I do also feel like if they give you spares, like if you if you're clumsy with two arms, if they give you four <laughs> arms, is that twice as many cuts? Yeah. That's true. Are you hurting yourself twice as much? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Or do you become more? Uh, I feel like does it become a more the, facile the, thing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We all know that I want wings. I if we all know that I want <laughs> night vision. We all know that I want to yeah. glow in the dark skeleton. We've talked about these things yeah. before, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, man, this reminds me of, uh, Jeff, you, uh, Shannon's new, but, but Jeff, you know, I only like, uh, bad, weird movies that nobody cares about. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not a hipster thing. I just have a bad, broken brain and Shannon, <laughs> maybe we can talk about why uh -huh. I like the bad movies. Okay. You know, Gattaca. Mm hmm. Sure. There's a part where in Gattaca. Yeah, I Gattaca. Where they go, it's a it's it's a world where everybody buys their genetics, and they go to see a concert pianist, and they're, this pianist is playing this beautiful piece, and Uma Thurman leads over to Ethan Hawke, attractively, because it was like late '90s. They were both so hot, hot movie. Mm -hmm. This Gattaca, Jude Law was there. Both are still hot, still hot. But I mean, like we're talking all hot. three at the height of their powers. <laughs> and uh, yeah. she leans over and she goes, "This can only be played." with six fingers. This is a piece of music that's written to be played only with six fingers. And that's why right. it's so beautiful. Wow. And I'm thinking about that and I'm like, I can't think of a single thing I would do with this extra thumb, but like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I wear it for a week and I start thinking about things. Yeah. Well, I think based on this article that people came up with all kinds of novel ways to, make it easier for them to do certain things. I mean, you can hold the, think of, think of think ways of that you hold glasses. things and then add an extra support piece yeah. at the bottom of your palm. You know, Both phones could get so much bigger. Oh yeah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Phones have gotten too it. small. <laughs> Thank God they can get bigger now. And think of like when someone does a really good job, you can give them two thumbs up. Oh, with one you hand, could, you could you hang know? loose so easily. So easy. you could, you could hang loose way easier. <laughs> yeah, you could hang loose so easy. I, I wonder how long could, it would take to 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 not just you know if if everybody started adding these things. 
how long it would take society to catch up and be like how how long it would take society to just move to a, a multiples of 11 yeah counting system a four, a four thumb system oh yeah right because yeah isn't our whole counting system based on fives because we have five fingers yeah yeah the decimal system yeah but now now it just seems easier to count to 11 hmm. you know we'd have to change everything did we used to have 12 <laughs> fingers and that's why calendar? Maybe. Have we discovered something? Is this ancient aliens shit? <laughs> well, my they my get thing to keep that I'm so thumb? excited about with this is, is that it, it isn't a shunt to the brain, yeah. right? This yeah. feels like really accomplishable. You know, put a, you know, this is like a product you could buy. Right. You could, if, if this, if this is relatively cheap to mass produce, put, give me the little Wi-Fi device in my shoe and now I've got a, a a thumb that's useful. Like that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I bet this wouldn't cost no very much. No surgery required, you know. Yeah, I bet it couldn't cost much at all. Really, that's what they're saying. It's all it's all three D printed stuff. Did they put the plans up? I want to make a thumb. No, I don't think they did that. They're not, they're not, these are scientists. They're not giving that shit away. Come on, <laughs> come on. Well, what I find <laughs> interesting about this too is that it kind of just like you start to think about all the different ways and the different things and tools that we use that actually are changing our brain, you know, that just yeah. like the simplest yeah. things can change your brain. Or just think about like the ways we can hold phones and interact with phones. Like if we gave ourselves an iPhone, you know, 20 years ago when there was no iPhone, our way of like handling the phone would be so clumsy. Yeah. And now we just. Dude, that's such a great point. Yeah. Yeah. And we talk, we talk about that a lot on the show is the um the ways in which as we as we get more reliant on technology we just offload things you know like kids used to have, have to learn multiplication tables and now it's just well we have calculators all the right. time on our person Jeff, so why Jeff do we need to do that Jeff didn't have a calculator so when he was a kid Jeff like, is very old <laughs> What? Uh, I said Jeff I said they didn't have calculators when you were a kid grandpa Wait, are they really still not, they're not, they're not learning? They have multi- to learn multiplication tables. They absolutely do. I don't think so. They don't have to memorize I don't know. them? I don't know. I'll find out when my kids get into school. I, I think, but I'm, I, I'm curious about this new But math. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like we used to, we used to have to remember everybody's phone number. We used to have to know yeah. the directions right. to places. We used to have to right. be able to. There's things that technology is now offloading from us. And I feel like it's really the same thing that you're talking about. The brain goes, Oh, I can use this extra thumb or, Oh, I've got all the world's knowledge in my pocket. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a very similar, I think a very analogous process. What if you had to choose <laughs> extra thumb or all the world's knowledge in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going thumb. I gotta go thumb. I go thumb every <laughs> time, <laughs> baby. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it is funny. Cause like, yeah, we're so adaptable. We're so like, we're not going to pay attention to we learn pretty quickly what what is life or death and what's what we need to pay attention to and what we need to hold on resources for and what we kind of can offload. But it's weird what we do. Yeah. Hold, this OK, here's a yeah. question that I have for you, Shannon. OK, you fucking scientist. <laughs> All right. <Here's, laughs> how come we are adaptable in that way where yeah. my sense of direction is not as good as it was and my brain was cool to give that up? My yeah. brain was like. Cool. We'll give up the 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 knowledge that we have to remember how to get someplace sure. because now we can look it up. But lizard brain says everything kill me. Right. Sure. How come there's stuff that we can't get rid of? Sure. I mean, because, yeah, certain things are going to be I think it's kind of a tension, too. So, like, if if you were in a really stressed out situation, like you're like, you know, attention system is going to be more online. Like if you know that knowing yeah. how to get to the nearest exit is, you know, life or death, you might be a little bit better at direction. Uh, That's fair. <laughs> so like, I think it's again, this kind of attention thing that like, where are we, where are we putting our conscious attention? And if we kind of know by now that we never need to know directions anywhere uh, because we always just have a map at our fingertips, then we're not going to, we're not going to put any like emotional or like cognitive energy into remembering direction. But if you are, hmm. if, so, if you're a driver, maybe you will. I, so what you're saying, Shannon, is that anything that you want to remember yeah. 
you have to make a matter of life and death. Yes. <laughs> if you really want to remember it, if it's like, so here's what that's I why I remember the faces of all my enemies. Yeah. <laughs> we have we have a service that we offer to okay. people. Okay. Now we're talking. Do you wanna do you wanna never forget your anniversary? Sure. We will threaten to murder you <laughs> if you don't. We will come to your house at a time of our yeah. choosing when you do not know. We will kidnap you. Okay. Tie you up in the basement and ask you what the anniversary is. All right. You don't you better you better know it or we will murder well, you. Well, this is and we're not messing around. I love this. I love this idea. But I will say if we're under too much stress, then we're going to we're not mm. going to remember. So we got to have the good balance of stress. Right. Mm. So a little bit of stress oh. is really good for our so, brain and memory and performance. A lot of stress. So we kidnap them, but we don't tie them up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like and maybe we don't blindfold. Them. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. what? But or. What if on the day of what if on the day of their anniversary, you pay us, and at some point during the day when you don't know when, on the day of your anniversary, we just come over and we shove you and we go happy anniversary, motherfucker! Like as you hit the ground. <laughs> okay. Will you remember it then? I you mean, will always remember are you that, are right? you gonna are you gonna hit your head when you hit the ground? <laughs> we push you and then we throw down a pillow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. What if we set fire to your car? But I, uh, not you. You're not in it. I mean, emotion. <laughs> you're not in if it. If you're going to have an emotional attachment, our brain's like, okay, this is something we might want to remember for a while. See? Yeah. It's we, and then we just, we call it, we call it something with shove in it. Cause I like the word shove. A, a shove good. to yeah. remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a shove to remember. <laughs> And we write it in the fancy, in a frilly font. Yeah. yeah. Shannon, I know other than, other than your science, shove. Yeah. your passion is branding. Yeah, my passion's branding and also, yeah, in uh, startups <laughs> also. So this is good for me. So how do you feel about this? Yeah, yeah. you always remember your first shove is what uh -huh. we call it. Okay, I'm, I'm already seeing the Shark Tank <laughs> pitch, so. Mm -hmm. It's good, right? Uh -huh. It's good. Um, do you think we are moving? I, it sounds like you think that that this sort of offloading is, isn't just natural, but it, but it might be positive for us. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Positive, positive, negative. It makes it seem more like I'm not putting a moral judgment on it. I just think it's what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> right. Classic scientists. Yeah. Classic scientists. It's not about that. It's it, it. You're reporting on what you're, what you observe and what, the facts lead to, and it's not about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Right. I mean, I think you could debate all day about like the fact that we're more online. Is it bad? Is it good? It's like, well, it, it doesn't matter what we think because we are. Right. right. We are online. So like, and like, unfortunately. Yeah, guilt. How much guilt should I have? Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, why are we putting, like, why do we have to put this kind of morality kind of like. No, you're a scientist. What's the number of guilt I should have? <laughs> uh, 4.5. Oh, I'm way higher. I'm good. Mm. Yeah. I'm good. Well, 4.5 out of three. You know, I think about that also in terms of being online. Like, we have these systems, like, these like evolutionary systems in our brain that, like, we really love social support, right? We like getting the approval of others because, for, you know, evolutionary like wise that was really good for survival like being in group and having resources yeah. and then we now have we have online we have at our fingertips like every comment anyone wanted to ever make about us they can just post it and it's right. so good and it's so cool yeah. and it's the best <laughs> and it's like well yeah. we have these brains and now we have this and like how are they going to interact with each other <sighs> interesting Not well well, I, I, I wonder what happens when we become used to things like these assistive devices, whether it's a whether it's a second thumb or, you know, uh, some sort of enhanced some sort of enhanced vision or AR on, on our glasses or whatever it sure. is. And then we. We become dependent on it and then we have to try. Do we ever have to try to remove it? I guess I don't know, like because the worry is always like, well, what happens if we try to live without this then? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that in a certain sense, we are already dependent on something like, I mean, this is a very banal example, but something like shoes. 
Sure. I can I can like, I can kick shoes anytime I want. <laughs> you think you could live without shoes? Anytime I want. I'm not addicted to shoes. And not be in constant pain. <laughs> yeah. I'm not addicted to shoes. You're you know addicted I mean? to shoes. Like if you if you had to go about your normal <laughs> yeah. life without shoes. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to like go to the store and I mean I not, can't go to the store. Setting aside I can't the, go to the store because of their policies. <laughs> I was just gonna say, setting aside yeah. their service policy. Right. They but like like walking on the street and the things you would normally do on a normal day without shoes, I think you would be in agony. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. And you're right. And we think of that as like not necessary, but just helpful. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is the whole thing. Everything. There's lots of things that aren't necessary, but they're helpful. Like, you know, a lot of people are anti-medicine because they're like, oh, you're, you know, stupid. Yeah. Your immune system can handle it. It's like, well, we have these things that kind of help your immune system along. Yeah. It it turns out that in history, we have seen that sometimes the immune system is not enough. Yeah. Uh, actually, it, we've seen in history that sometimes <laughs> the immune system does not work out the way you planned, right. and then and then and then you die when you're not opposed to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out yeah. you're not opposed to die, but I. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think there's such a there's such a glut of information that that. So science is a feeling. And there is a glut of information sometimes that changes people's natural good feelings into bad feelings because they don't think enough about the feeling that is science. People hear things like, oh, we're becoming antibiotic immune. And so they go, well, I'm going to have to dip my baby in the fucking East River to make sure my baby is my baby has a super uh, a super immune system. And that's not what the news is actually saying when we talk about things like that. Yeah. And it's also because someone's selling a, a dip your baby in the East River treatment and they're, you know, they're on the Internet saying this is the only way. This if you had only- to brand that, how would you brand it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a dip for now means less <laughs> dips later. There you go. There you go. I hate dips later. I want fewer uh, of those. Yeah. <laughs> that looks, yeah, that looks unpleasant. I should do it now while I can. <laughs> so I don't have to do it many times later. And this is like, why didn't I get a PhD in branding is, is what I'm. You I don't know why have. they don't offer. It sounds like you didn't need yeah. one. Yes. <laughs> you don't go, you don't go to school for what's already up here. You know right. what I'm saying? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want them to release these plants. I want to add a second thumb, mm. a third thumb, a third second. Yeah, thumb. I think I would wear this. I think I would try this thing out, man. If they if they release this as a as a product, I would I would buy one. I don't I don't know what I would do with it. I guess I would find out in the moment. But I I can't. Yeah, I think you would just do everything you normally do, but a little bit better and easier. Okay. You know. Okay, I'll accept it. High fives can be high sixes now. Ooh, that's one better. It's a whole world. That's one that's better. better. Yeah, you're right. I'll take two. <laughs> Until that thumb starts learning on its own, uh, and then that oh, that it, thumb it is a robot. It rebels. rebels, and that's it rebels against its master. Exactly, <laughs> it's the most useful <laughs> finger. We can't have it rebel. Out of all the fingers, <laughs> it it's yeah. the most use. It's the most useful finger. Uh, I, that's you know you know what I would call that movie. Uh, Disposable. <laughs> Okay, I like that. Pretty yeah. good. No, I all just right. like the idea yeah. in the movie. All it can't control the whole body; it just controls the. Th- so it's just pressing buttons. It's like no, don't press that <laughs> button. <laughs> yeah, and every it's all the dangerous buttons. <laughs> it's all the most dangerous buttons. G- uh, g- garbage disposal, uh, trash <laughs> compactor, yeah. all the garbage things. It was the thumb. It's constantly, <laughs> it's constantly indicating your approval to people that you don't wish to give your approval yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. <laughs> oh, he gave me a thumbs up. No, I, I curse you, thumb. <laughs> now I have to let this dangerous hitchhiker into my car. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even hitchhiking. Why are you slowing down? <laughs> I saw your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, this is great. Shannon, thank you for helping us weigh in on this. It's a very important story. Mm. And we're glad that we had somebody here with your credentials. Yeah, I don't know how much knowledge I gave from the credential uh, standpoint, but I was glad I could give some knowledge based on the uh, branding standpoint. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, much more yeah. useful to be quite honest. We, you know, honestly, we th- we, we thought uh, we thought this was going to be a semi-useful episode, and it turned out to be a very <laughs> useful episode. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to discuss stuff like this uh, on uh, with other concerned citizens, talk about what limbs you want to add. Remember, it's a family show. This family is gathered around the Philco together, listening to the show. Uh, but what you would do with? I mean, we are a family, but we're not for families. That's what I would say. You're, you're anti-family? Wow. Wow. I, yes. Wow. I don't believe our show is for wow. families, but it is a family. Uh, go on to the Discord and tell Jeff how horrible it is that he's anti-family. <laughs> uh, if you want to join the Discord, there's an easy way to do so. Jeff, tell them where they can direct all their complaints towards you. Oh, uh, by joining our Discord. The best way to complain <laughs> about me or Anthony or anybody is to go to patreon.com slash we have concerns give us at least a dollar a month and then you have access to our discord where we get all the complaints <laughs> so if you want to, to just pop off and let us know a piece of your mind first go to patreon.com slash we have concerns really stick it to us by giving us some of your money and then you'll have access to the cool discord it's just a dollar a month to get to the discord if you want to give us more money and really make us understand how frustrated you are by our opinions, you can get even cooler perks by giving us higher uh, tiered money. The money comes in higher <laughs> tiers. I don't know if you've noticed in your pocket. Some money is higher tier than the other money. And as yeah. that money goes up in tiers, we also give yeah. you more content. One of the things that you'll get this week, actually, is an entire bonus episode with Shannon O'Dell, where we are asking your questions about the brain that you put into the Discord in between complaints about us. It's very exciting. So great. So go ahead and head to patreon.com slash we have concerns. We're going to give you one question for free. We're going to give you one yeah. freebie, baby. Uh, Just to really tick you <laughs> off and get you motivated. To yeah, post. you're going to hate this question. It's the worst. Um, this one comes from Big Jim in the Discord. Thank you, Big Jim. Big Jim wants to know why we so strongly associate smell with memories. It seems like we associate oh. smell even more strongly with memories than than our other senses. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Something I should probably know. Well, let's just <laughs> <laughs> let's just talk about smell for a second oh she's gonna say it she's gonna say her catchphrase <laughs> and don't go through my nose <laughs> <laughs> you know i wonder if it has to do i know smell doesn't get like gated in the same way as our other sensory information so like all our other sensory information we take it in and it goes through this area of the brain called the thalamus which is kind of like you know, a ga- it, and then the thalamus sends it off to like cortical regions to like make sense of it. Oh, this is what we talk about all the time mm-hmm. where it's like we're seeing everything that's around us all the time, but we we only take in the thing that's most important to us at the moment and the rest kind of yeah, gets thrown out. Exactly. So the thalamus is part part of that kind of like gate gatekeeping kind of apparatus. But the olfaction doesn't go through the thalamus. The olfaction goes kind of straight to the areas it needs to. And I think I do believe there is a lot of connections between um, our olfactory system and our hippocampus, which is the area of the brain that's responsible for memory. So I think that's part of the reason why. And, you know, I'm wondering, you know, what the kind of evolutionary kind of reason why that would be. Um, It seems interesting to me because it seems like smell Out of all of the senses, we might need it, not the least, but it's not way up there. Like you would think, right? You would think like sight and sound, super important. Hook that directly to the brain. Take that all in. Smell, it's like, hey, buddy, you've got the fast track. 
to the hippocampus. Well, I'm going to challenge you on that. You want to know Please why? Please don't. It's my show and it's <laughs> okay. very rude. Okay, I'll see myself oh my <laughs> I got the VCR. Let's take it in. Okay. Um, what The thing about smell is that we have a lot of, we can decipher so many different types of smell, even if we don't know it. Like the amount of compounds that like actually decipher with smell, I think is estimated to be like in the trillions. Wow, really? Oh. Whereas like, okay, when you taste something, <laughs> you got, you got what, five tastes? But what's the- Tastes, yeah. it, tastes like chicken. It, all it, tastes, all, it always tastes like chicken. It's umami. Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> sweet. Sour. Chicken. Yeah. Two. Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> two chickens. Second chicken. A sweet, a sour, right. and umami, and two chickens. <laughs> right? Because everything that we think of as flavor is actually smell. Um, Wait, sweet, yeah. savory, salty, right. bitter, bitter, umami. Wait, savory is is umami. Once again, please don't challenge me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the video. I got a video about the tongue. No, Let's so get- so that's interesting. So we can, so we can <laughs> I travel everywhere with the video about the tongue. <laughs> yeah, that one specifically. People are constantly asking. Like, I just, I just, this is part of my package. I just travel You'd with my tongue video. You'd be surprised how often it all comes back to the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is fascinating. So we can take in more smell data without knowing what it is than we can. I like mean, a taste. yeah. Wow. There's a lot of data there. I mean, and it, you know, we have like a kind of. We could smell an eldritch god, but we could not perceive it with our eyes. A what? <laughs> A uh, multi tentacled shambling ah. god from the center of the earth. Yes. <laughs> to see it would drive us mad, but maybe we could smell it. Yeah. There we go. What? So it, it, it that would lead me to believe, though, that if we're getting a ton of data, that it would we would want it to go through the gatekeeping center mm. of the brain, right? It, like it feels like the more data, the more gatekeeping we sure, need. Sure, sure. Right? Um. Yeah. One would one would think. I. You know. I don't know. It must have been. There must be a reason for it that we that we want to link smell so uh, tightly with memory. And maybe it's that we can get a lot of like, you know, survival data from smell. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of, you know, uh, smell, of course, can be a big danger sign. Sure. Uh, it can be don't you know, don't eat that. Don't consume that. Don't be in mm-hmm. here. That thing is dead. I smell I smell a <laughs> knife. Now it's rising. <laughs> yeah. Now it's yeah. moving toward me and it still smells wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, is it, is it animated by an eldritch God? <laughs> Perhaps it is. Am I slowly going insane? <laughs> smells like it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fascinating. I wonder if there's something about the, the immediacy of it and just the amount of, so we can perceive a lot of different smells, but we don't often have to take in tons of smells. You know, not as much as not as much as the visual data we're taking in all the time or the auditory data we're taking. So maybe there is a reason why we need that to be more filled. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because think about there's so many there's so many. I'm thinking about there's just so many smells. (laughs) Yeah, there's like chicken, 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 sweet, (laughs) sour. What the rock is cooking, which is usually chicken. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, with with mice, I know because. Uh, like when you're doing mouse experiments and you're like trying to do like uh, an experiment where the mouse should be able to decipher two different things, they get like small changes in chemical compounds because mice have this like giant yeah. olfactory bulb. Uh, they're like, yeah. they never shut up about it. They're they're constantly, they're like, <laughs> oh, I smell the difference. I smell a little different today. Oh, I, I know like, that okay. because of my, the size of my olfactory yeah. bulb, my work, <laughs> you know. I don't want to brag. <laughs> so that that's interesting. So it's 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 a more subtle sense then. Yeah. I mean, cuz yeah, it's like what I think it's like a thousand or a trillion different receptors to get like little different com- like compounds, right? But then smells are like a mixture of different all those different compounds. Wow. Uh Yeah, I mean, I'm no <laughs> I'm no smell scientist, but should have gotten your PhD in smell science. That's but, where they're hiring. But I what, said, don't put it in my nose. <laughs> yeah. Hey. 
It's branding, exactly. baby. Uh, I had to stay true, true to brand. Thank you, Big Jim, for the question. Did you, did you have to write a doctoral thesis? I did. Or did you, or did you it, pay your way out of it? I didn't. Other people did, <laughs> but they were like, you, you don't have to write. You? Uh, my thesis was about memory, but it was like on a very molecular level. So it was, uh, it was about epigenetics. So I don't know if we yeah. talk a lot about epigenetics here. So the idea that you have DNA, but like your DNA and every cell is the same. So how DNA gets read is through like these epigenetic marks, which turns things on, turns things off. And so yeah. it was kind of looking at an area of the brain. Known as it's the what hip- the government puts in the vaccines <laughs> to change our DNA. I, I, I legally can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe we hit something where Shannon was like, you know what? I, I shouldn't joke about that. That's actually not a thing yeah. we're going to joke about. And then, hey, because actually get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. Please just get vaccinated. And I know I don't need to tell any of our audience this. <laughs> so but uh, so memory yes. and epigenetics. So basically what my project was looking at was like, so in different cells might have different epigenetics even though they're like all the same cells. So all the same types of cells have mostly the same epigenetic marks, but they might be slightly, slightly different. And I was looking at this area of the brain called the hippocampus, which is the area where memory is, you know, formed and stored. And uh, I was looking at, so randomly when we're forming memories, just random kind of bunches of neurons get excited. And then they're kind of like, that memory is, that it's called sparse coding. So like you have tons of neurons and only it's sparsely encoded. These memories just randomly different groups get taken at different times. So I was looking at, could we predict what, what neurons are going to kind of get pulled out at any one time based on their epigenetics? Uh, Oh, kind of like, what is the reason why we get different groups at different times? And is there like a dispatching system for exactly. memory? Exactly. It's basically like, can I like read the epigenetics of these cells and kind of say like, these guys are ready to go. And these guys, these guys are not going to be part of the memory trace. Wow. Hmm. That's yeah. fascinating. And what did you That's find? Interesting. I- yeah, I found that like, yeah, there might be some kind of like kind of random stochastic kind of switching that happens epigenetically within these groups of cells so that at any one time, some groups of cells are a little bit more excitable and therefore are more likely to be involved in the memory trace at that time versus later on, you know, two weeks later, those switches kind of, you know, are randomly turn off and maybe randomly turn on in another cell. And those cells wow. are. So you're saying that, like, wh- what we remember sometimes is just a fluke of our epigenetics, like wh- what what happened to be. Mm primed and ready to be imprinted at any given moment might be what we remember rather than some other factor. Um, No, not exactly saying that. What I'm saying is which cells, because it's going to be like, it, it almost seems like random, which cells are become the memory trace at any one given time. We know a couple of things. We know like cells that are more excitable or in like a more excitable state are more likely to be part of the physical memory trace, right? This is called the engram, which like Mm -hmm. the physical like memory trace in the brain you like delete those cells and the memory's gone kind of and you can if you get a really if you get a rare engram but you don't need it you can crush it into dust and then you can use it to buy new armor are you following yeah (laughs) (laughs) um but so so all of these clusters of neurons Mm -hmm. will respond in the will respond in the same way they don't they don't editorialize but it's a it's a matter of which ones are ready at any given time. Exactly. And the idea is like, it seems like there's different groups of cells that are ready at different times so that we can have this brain that can store so much memory because randomly only, you know, this bunch of cells, part of this memory. And then like later on this bunch of cells, it can be for this memory thing called sparse coding, which kind of allows for a lot of data storage. And so the idea is like the same cells can't always be ready for the memory or you're going to have like a little bit too much overlap. So how is there like, you know, this dynamic switching in the cell that that allows for different cells to have their turn to shine? Oh, we talked about, we talked a little bit about something like this, Jeff, where, where one memory is distributed just in case of like 
in case of failure, it's a, it's a fail safe, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. like all your important right. memories aren't in this piece because yeah. this is the important memory zone. Right. Because then if you, if somebody tries to get you to remember your anniversary and they push you over and they don't get the pillow underneath yeah. you in time and you hit your head, right. you lose all your important memories except for the date of your anniversary. Okay. Right. Right. But of course you signed you the signed waiver. You signed the waiver. So you knew the risks. <laughs> you know, it was part of the so contract. That's, so that's cool. So we know that it, there was an idea that it was kind of like a defense mechanism, right? Because it's like, mm. I'm going to put all of this knowledge everywhere so you can't get conked in the head real good and lose yeah. all your knowledge. But is it, could it also be like, the first thing that popped into my head, you know how like one nostril rest? Are there neurons that get tired? And so- Oh, interesting. Yeah, well, you know, the the- what we do know about it, since they have these kind of things uh, like uh, characteristics that uh, allow them maybe to be more likely involved in the engram, one is excitability. And because only at a given time, only a certain amount of cells are maybe in their most excitable states, what that means temporally is memories that happen somewhat close in time are somewhat linked. Which may uh -huh. be, right. you know, evolutionarily important. It's, you know how many times that you like think about like a trip that you took and you also kind of remember all the other things that happened during that trip. Right. We like temporally link things yeah. in time. Uh, that might be a reason for it too. That's so wild. Yeah. That's so wild. That's why, man, you associate like, it's crazy. It's crazy what simple machines we really are. Cause that's why if somebody's yeah. around on like a really good day of your life. Yeah. You're like, oh, I really like that person. I don't know why. I just really like that person. Oh, it's the same day you won $10,000. Right. Yeah. It had nothing to do with that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, at, and then it's also like what I'm always just amazed with. It's just like, okay, so I studied this question. Yeah. Like here, here are the results I had. And like, hopefully this is something meaningful. Basically, you just kind of give it to the science community, you write it up and you say like, here, here's what we found. And like, here's what we think is going on. But like, you guys take this and you run with it. See if you see, you know, a similar yeah. thing. And it's like, we don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, well, I did yeah. my part and yeah. I will see you later. <laughs> exactly. When you do your part, we'll meet back here. And <laughs> yeah, because it's like, ultimately it's like, Hey, yeah, maybe this is, this is, the thing that's happening but that i mean that's just science and that's the beauty of it it's a feeling it's right. a feeling baby <laughs> it's a feeling you know what i've i've learned today anthony what it's that dr shannon should be hosting the show instead of us that's what i oh 100 percent 100 percent but listen there are multiple reasons we have a no scientist uh a no scientist policy on the show number one is uh because science is a feeling and number two is because every time they just fucking hand our asses to us both asses hand yes. it to us three they all three cheeks asses. yeah <laughs> and we realize that we are vastly unqualified to do what we're doing right Buddy, now if i was qualified to do anything i'd have a job you know yeah. what i'm saying wink oh yeah but, but you saying. know what i think <laughs> To be a scientist is just to ask questions, and we both are asking questions, so you're both scientists. So we're now PhDs. Yes. You know what? We're, we're doing better than, in, than scientists. We're providing answers. Yeah. They're mostly wrong, <laughs> but at least they're answers. Yeah, at least we're not like, the more data needed. <laughs> Those nerds. Scientists yeah. are always like, oh, we need more data. Well, we need more data, dude. <laughs> They're all like, we don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, but why though? But which, but is it a but if it's just the crack or is, and they're like, we don't know. No. And I'm like, ah, science, come on. Uh, well, we appreciate, <laughs> even though you refuse to answer any questions, we mm. appreciate you coming by. Uh, if people want to, if people want to hear and see more of you, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Tell us about it. Sure. Uh, you can, if you like podcasts, cause you're listening to one now. So, oh, but Maybe but like correlation one. is not causation. Yeah. <laughs> so don't even try to pretend like you don't. You can listen to the podcast Fun City. Uh, it is a, uh, sh you know, and you can see 
you can hear, because you're not seeing, because it's about Anthony Carboni playing a character on Fun City for two episodes. Love Fun City. Uh, it's a Shadowrun tabletop role-playing podcast. Uh, I also host uh, The Science of Self-Care. It's a science podcast where we dig into a different self-care practice, and I tell you what the research says about it. Mm. Uh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. I bet it's mostly garbage. You know, I try to, you know, I'm very, with the podcast, I'm like, you know, we don't know. But right. Because you yeah. want to start a store where you sell. Exactly. Because I'm selling. And at the end of every po- every episode, <laughs> I sell it. Uh, and then, and then where, where are you on the, where are you on the socials and things? Oh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Shodell, S-H-O-D-E-L-L. Or if you're on TikTok. Okay, I am on TikTok Whoa. at Shannon.phd. She's a cool scientist. Mm-hmm. She's on TikTok. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, and remember, if you are a patron, we're gonna ask uh we're gonna ask another couple questions to Shannon. You will get that audio in your inbox if you're at the uh if you're at the three dollar level or above. So be sure to listen there. A bargain. It's a bargain. That's what that's just one level up from complaining about our bullshit. Yes. <laughs> uh, and remember, you can find us everywhere online. I'm at A Carboni. I'm at Jeff and, Canada. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see we'll see you later. We'll see you later, baby. That's our that's my sign off. I'm not good at branding like Shannon is. Nice. Stick it in your nose. Stick it in your nose, everybody. Yeah, she could she could host the show. We'd be so much more popular because we'd be branding better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>